Good morning, Shane, GTC, back with another quick video. When you guys are shopping for performance vehicles, how important is zero to 60 time to you guys? Let's talk about it. So when I was much younger, 20s, zero to 60 times were like the thing. I had to know what the zero to 60 time was. In fact, if I found a cool vehicle, other than just catching my eye, if I had even a remote interest in the car, the first thing I was looking at were specs. Horsepower and zero to 60. And if it didn't meet my expectations, I was moving on, right? I was moving on to the next car. <clears throat> I think I've matured a little bit now. Because if you're shopping for a performance car and if the manufacturers have got it right, you know that those zero to 60 times are important to them as well. But they're not everything. Especially in today's world where electric vehicles dominate the zero to 60, internal combustion engines, it's not possible to get a 1.9 zero to 60. And so being the king of the road with the zero to 60 times, excuse me, zero to 60 times, it's not the most important thing. And so think about it just for a second. Where does it rank when you're shopping for a car on your list? Does it rank number one? Does it rank five? Does it make your top 10? So when I was researching the 392, um, of course, I'm no dummy. I'm fully aware of the performance of this vehicle. And it was definitely part of factoring the equation performance. You don't want a car that has a ginormous V8 with all this horsepower and then you look at the zero to 60 time and it's like, you know, you hit the wah, wah, wah button. It's like, uh, it's gotta match. So it's gotta be competitive. But I'll tell you a 4.2, 4.3, 4.4, 4.5 second, in the real world zero to 60, even though they claim that on the car is under ideal conditions and the right temperature on the right track with the right tires. And to replicate that, it's really, really hard. And if you think about it, what's the real world practicality of a zero to 60 time? Unless you're racing every day, I, I just want a car that'll get up and move. And I assure you this car will get up and move. And at zero to 60 times are just fine. They're very, very quick. So I don't rank it as number one, number two, number three anymore, but it's probably top five in terms of under the umbrella of performance. But I will tell you, I'm more about how that car gets from zero to 60 or zero to 20 or zero to 100 and the whole visceral experience more than I am just a time. Because if that was the case, then I'd buy a Tesla, right? No frills, step on the accelerator and zip, you're there and, and there's no, you know, there's really nothing to do about it. It just goes and it's there. I want the whole experience, right? I want the sound, the feel, the torque, the way that the motor feels, the exhaust, you know, coming out the back. That's all part of the experience. And so to me, zero to 60 times important, but it's more about how I get there. So tell me what your thoughts are. I'd like to hear your feedback when you're shopping. If you're just all about the zero to 60 times and you're all about horsepower and torque and, and less about maybe features or, you know, aesthetics of the car. I'm just curious how, how most are looking, um, you know, when they're car buying. But for me, this is why I think Dodge hit the sweet spot. They hit the sweet spot on all of the boxes, right? They kind of check the look, the feel, the ride, the comfort, the horsepower. It's um, horsepower to rate uh, weight ratio, how the horsepower is delivered, um, how the torque is delivered. It is just, oh, it's so good. And I, I wouldn't trade this for my 335 right now. I would not. As fun as that 335 was and it's handling and, you know, BMW quality or, or whatever, you know, all the features, this car, hands down, it, it wouldn't even take me a half of a second. So give me your feedback. Also, Jared, you and I have chatted about this. I'd like to hear your thoughts um, about zero to 60 and where this ranks for you, because I think we're pretty similar, but over to Jared. What do you think, bud? Hey, 
Hey Shane, so yeah, I like this discussion, zero to 60. It's a, it's a good topic. Um, you know, we, we all are aware of the specs, to, to your point. I think, I think you covered it pretty well. Um, we look at the specs and, you know, if it doesn't fit into what we think of as a sports car or a performance car, you know, we move on. Uh, I think the scat pack is, uh, you know, spec'd out at about 4.3. That's pretty fast. Of course, um, I think Jay's Tesla, when I was in it, I think that's rated at 4.1, but it felt faster. I mean, the, with the advent of the EVs and the way those are coming on, um, you just want zero to 60. If that's all you're interested in, yeah, go get a, go get a Tesla for that matter, get a Plaid. But, um, you know, uh, for for others, the, those that are into the muscle cars and and the uh, um, the ice cars, the internal combustion engines, it's a little bit different, and that's where the butt dyno comes into play for me. It's it's how does the car feel when you're in the seat, when you're driving it, when you're behind the wheel, um, all of those things that you know aren't just numbers. Um, how does it sound? You know. Um, that that's a huge part of the overall experience so it's a little bit different so no zero to 60 definitely not a determining factor for me at all it's all of the the other factors it's everything put together in one package so uh cool topic we'd love to hear what the rest of you think what do you think about zero to 60 how important is it all right guys catch you on the next one appreciate it take care